Hello there, World of Tankers. Welcome to the channel. I'm, of course, your host, Edgerudels Blitz, and in today's video, we are going to be breaking into this, the 50 TP, and then a bunch of words jumbled after it that I will never, ever be able to pronounce. But this is a really strong vehicle. It's the Tier 9 Polish Tech Tree Heavy Tank. It's a vehicle that I have not been able to break down on the channel yet, but oh my, when you look at the actual turret armor and the hull armor of this tank, it is quite gruesome to be at that. The actual design of this vehicle kind of reminds me of an IS. It's got that big lower plate. It's got that hatch kind of that the IS has in the middle. I wonder if this design was based off of an IS, but the only thing that I don't get if it was, then why is the upper plate 400 millimeters thick and why is the turret impenetrable by literally every round? Well, yeah, speaking of the armor, I mean, we can break into it right now. Oh, I misclicked. This is the armor of the tank. It is 277 millimeters on that upper plate, but you'll notice even with an object 268, it can't pen the upper plate. Why is that? It has way more than 283 at 303 standard pen. Well, the reason is because AP shells and APC are auto ricochet at a 72 degree angle. Then this tank's upper plate is, you guessed it, a 72 plus degree angle. So you cannot actually pen it on flat grounds. Now you can hit this hatch here. That's very weak at 227. The lower plate's quite weak at 197 mill millimeters thick as well. Like sure, that lower plate is quite strong. If you actually over angle it, you can get it up to about 260. I mean, that's quite impressive, but it's definitely not strong enough to bounce most tier 10 rounds. Rounds. However, when you load heat, you might think it's an easy pen, until again on flat ground you realize that the upper plate of this tank is 390 due to it being such a steep angle. This tank really has some incredible frontal armor, and by the way, the turret, I mean, don't even get me started on that, this is 380 millimeters of heat pen, and we can't even penetrate anywhere on the actual turret itself. Now sure, it does have cupolas up here, which you can pen at 120 and 114, but haul down, yeah, good luck hitting those cupolas. Plus. This is an incredibly strong haul down tank. With its 8 degrees of gun depression, it might be one of the strongest haul down tanks tier for tier in the game. Now, mobility wise, it goes 36 kilometers per hour forward, 15 in reverse, but because I'm running improved gear oil, it can go up to 40 forwards and 19 in reverse, sporting an average speed of 32, which is pretty good actually. It has a power to weight ratio of 16.0. And when we break into the gun, it has 263 millimeters of standard penetration, 318 on the premium, and its average damage damage is at 460. So this tank has some really good values going for it. It actually has the same premium penetration as the IS-7. So personally, I think the tank looks good. And unlike most of the Polish heavies, which have terrible dispersion, a good example is the Tier 10, the 60TP, that has 0.385 dispersion, or the Tier 8 that is sitting at 0.367, the dispersion on this tank at 0.349 is actually very accurate for what it is carrying a 130 millimeter. So let's get into some gameplay. Now when we break into the actual gun handling it's not amazing it's got around a five second aiming time which is nothing to be saying it's good and as well it's dpm at around 2000 base is one of the lowest at tier 10 for a heavy tank now of course i am running calibrated shells but uh even then i mean if you're running rammer you're only gonna have maybe around 21 2200 dpm and judging that most tier 10 heavies are have around 2200 base i mean it's really not that much of a difference as it is because tier 9s don't have that much dpm so yeah, we're going to see what we can do here. The enemy team has an E75. They got a T92E1, AMX5120. Their tier 10 lineup isn't actually too bad. So, or tier 9 lineup, sorry. I'm used to playing so much tier 10 that uh, I just got it stuck in my mind every time. But uh, yeah, let's push our tank over towards the hull down side of the map. Because obviously, we just went over how ridiculously capable this tank is in hull down positions. Just like the tier 8. So uh, yeah, clearly this tank is a hull down ridgeline beast. Here we are using that mobility easily up to our top speed of 40 kilometers per hour. We outstripping the RHM, although that's probably not too impressive judging that the RHM is not the fastest of vehicles. So here we are. This is actually a really strong lineup too because we're not really up against too much of deadly takes. We got the T-49 kind of out in the open. We also got the FCM. Let's load it in HE and oof, hit him right in the gun. That kind of sucks. I mean, I'll still take 300 damage. That's not bad. But uh, it's definitely not, you know, that normal, what, 400, 600 damage I'd be dealing with an HE. So let's reload another shell here. Maybe we can tap that T92E1 and fire. Boom. There you go. Nice tap for 433. This gun, as I said, is quite accurate. I can expect those shots to hit, which feels really strong. So we've already gotten about two connecting shells out. We got the Carnarvon Action 10 off to the side. Let's aim at a shell in his upper part of the turret. And I, I actually don't know where that went. I mean, the game you kind of saw lagged when I fired, so... 
The shot was perfectly aimed, but uh, yeah, sometimes perfectly aimed shots do not go where you want them to. We have that T-49 off to the side aiming at an HE shell, and oh, we are not able to connect that just of yet. But uh, let's see if we can get a shell into that Action 10, or maybe that E-75, and fire! There you go, 499 damage. And uh, yeah, I'm really not worried about being penned by this Action 10. I am going to turn on my game volume a little bit, though. It seems a little loud. All right, let's see here. We got that action 10 still kind of sitting there. And boom, another nice tap right into the turret. I mean, that's where the fantastic standard pen cuts just straight through. Literally cut straight through frontal armor like no tomorrow. So that action 10, sure, it is a strong tank. But when it's up against tier 9s, I mean, it really does not stand much of a chance. And boom, there you go. Another nice tap for 401 damage. Pretty good. And with that, yeah, this is going to be one solid victory. Man, it really seems like my game volume is super loud today. I turned it down quite a bit, but uh, yeah, if I turn it down too much, you also won't hear anything. Let's see, we got the E75 over here. Boom! Oh, just a little bit off to where I wanted it to go. But hey, either way, this is a pretty solid game. We've dealt pretty good damage, and uh, we were easily able to hold Hall down and bounce basically all the shells that were fired at our tank, apart from an HE shell, which is, well, as we know, impossible to bounce. So there's E75. Nice tap into his vehicle there for 429 and one more connecting shell and we will have over 3,000 damage man this mobility is actually really nice as you can see i've really just been enjoying this tank so i actually cannot pen that e75's uh frontal part there if you didn't know and we're just gonna oh i was gonna try and scrape that guy so we could finish him off but uh, yeah we're gonna spam our adrenaline key so i can out reload the other players here and we're gonna get one more shell connecting into the e75 and yeet there you go 477 and with that that was a very strong first game 3,300. 82 damage easily breaking that 3k mark and uh i can't really complain this was just a fantastic battle and with that we were able to do yeah 33 82 well of course while that first game was pretty fantastic let's load in the one more and see if we can keep up that goodness or it's going to fall very short as sometimes my luck does do that now one thing i will say for advice on this tank is do not over angle the sides you'll see here that the sides of the tank are very weak i mean even at an angle like this it's only about 230 thick and that's barely even showing the side of the tank so while the front is incredibly strong the sides at only 100 millimeters thick i mean that is really really bad so don't expect to be getting any bounces on the side it doesn't really have spaced armor it's not thick at all and yeah that's one of the big issues with this vehicle is that if you over angle it or any high penetration vehicles are aiming at your side they're just cutting right through even if you try the side scrape so my advice is literally just unless you're at like a 90 degree angle don't even bother side scraping just kind of use the turret use the good gun alpha and play the tank like a normal haul down beast because it's kind of like a clan bong. If you're showing the sides of the Kron, you will be penned 99% of the time. Sure, it can have some troll bounces here and there, but for the most part, so can every tank, right? I mean, we've all bounced Sheridans in the side. We've all bounced probably RU251s in the side. So, yeah, I wouldn't put it past for this tank to get some troll bounces as well. But here we go. Speed is key. And we are going 40 kilometers per hour. I mean, man, that mobility is actually really nice. I like it because the tank isn't incredibly fast to a point where it's, like, overpowered. But it's also not slow to a point where it's, you know, slow. So here we go. Let's push our tank into the front line. But, man, is this a weird-looking tank. Somebody let me know in the comments. Is this actually based off of the IS tank? Because, to me, it looks like it. And when we further explore the side armor, how weak it is, I actually think that it probably was very similarly armored in real-life blueprints to what the IS is in real life. Now, we We've got the Progetto 46 off to the side. We've got the 53 TP over here. I'm going to be pushing my take over to this position, though, because this is a really strong spot if you want to get some shells out. So let's see. We got that Progetto. Let's aim in and fire. Boom. There you go. Nice tap in. Even on the side of my turret, we got a very easy bounce. I mean, that just shows you how capable this turret is of getting those pretty strong bounces. Not sure we did get hit by an HE shell, but uh, yeah, that HE shell really didn't do much to my tank. I really think this guy is going to angle his turret. Yeah, that's why I waited. But uh, hey, because that E75's cupola is so close to me, we cut right through it, and uh, we're doing pretty good already. We've gotten two connecting shells out. Three more seconds until we get one more shell. Let's aim in a raid on that E75 cupola once again, and fire. Boom, another nice tap for 460. With that, now we're sitting at over 1,380 damage this game. And again, we're just reloading. I mean, this is all you do in the tank, I guess, is really just reload. Now, we got that Lerva off to the side, and I'm going to aim in a shell raid right onto his vehicle. Nice tap. Although, massive low roll, 371 out of a 460 damage per shot tank. Yeah, that's a pretty big low roll. Thankfully, uh, yeah, this guy, he's probably not going to be enjoying the battlefield much more as a... Uh, yeah, we're just going to put it like that. 
So this is pretty good. We're at 2,200 damage. The uh, Yag Panther is hopefully going to finish that guy off. And I'm going to be pushing my tank up into the front line Oh, once again. We have that ISU off to the side. And let's see if we can get a big old slap into that ISU with that 8 degrees of gun depression aiming and fire. Boom. 483 into his tank. Man, this gun, it's just so nice. I'm really loving this vehicle. Such a nice tank. All right, so let's reload. Four more seconds left until we can get a shell out into a vehicle like the 252. So let's aim in that shell, and boom, there you go. 444. Use that reverse speed of 19 and get back in the cover. A couple more seconds here, and we've just broken the 3,000 damage barrier. Four, three, two, one, and here we go. Hello, 252. How are you doing, comrade? Boom, 458. I mean, I, I have no complaints about this tank. Honestly, it's a fantastic vehicle. The armor is great. The turret is fantastic, which is one thing that is usually very dependent on a vehicle. Let's get a nice overmatch into the side of the E75 side armor. And I mean, yeah, that, that was a battle in this tank. So this E75, he's probably going to get a bounce from the V count. No, he's just going to turn his tank to the side. Skills. Well, hopefully all of you enjoyed today's video. This tank did a great job, did everything I wanted it to, and I mean, that just showcases the capabilities of the 50TP. Easily, I think that this could play against tier 10s, especially on maps like Vineyards, maps like Mines, and work all down and not be penned in the turret. I mean, as we do know, sure, it does have cupolas, but look at how small they are. Not to mention, as we went over, Hull down, I mean, you are not going to be hitting those. It's incredibly hard to hit. Hopefully, all of you enjoyed today's video, and if you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. But other than that, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye!